It's not that easy being green, having to spend each day the color of the leaves. When I think it could be nicer being red or yellow or gold or something much more colorful like that. It's not that easy being green. Seems you blend in with so many other ordinary things And people tend to pass you over Cause you're not standing out like flashy sparkles in the water Or stars in the sky But green's the color of spring And green can be cool and friendly like green can be big like a mountain or important like a river or tall like a tree when green is all there is to be it could make you wonder why but why wonder why why do you wonder I'm green and it'll do fine because it's beautiful and I think it's what I want to be. Right, Jojo? Yes, today I introduce to you, if you haven't met him before, my very good philosopher friend, Jojo the Sock Monkey. Now, I met, I met Jojo <laughs> in... Uh, 2010, just before Christmas, this little shop. And since that time, I have had many deep and important conversations with this beautiful little friend of mine. Because he is a philosopher, and he is very, very wise. And so today, I introduce to you Jojo. Jojo, take it away. Okay, so Jojo's not going to speak to you today because he's a little shy, I guess, so I'll just have to talk to you about our conversations that we had, kind of wing it a little bit. Jojo wanted to talk today about the value that we share of diversity and inclusion in the Centers for Spiritual Living. And from the Centers for Spiritual Living perspective, we value, embrace, and celebrate the individual uniqueness and contribution of all people as they express through differences of gender, ethnicity, culture, history, experience, talents, and sexual orientation, we include representatives from all our organizational constituencies in leadership, in sacred service, and in decision making. So that is the Center for Spiritual Living's perspective on diversity and inclusion. And that is something that is very near and dear to Jojo's heart, because he loves to be uh, celebrating diversity of, of all people. Now, Ernest Holmes put it this way. He said, it is all the same. One substance in the universe taking different forms and shapes and becoming different things. Unity is expressed in multiplicity. And Ernest Holmes wrote this beautiful affirmation for people to use for themselves. And what he wrote was, I have an inner understanding of my place in the universe. I know that it is unique. The divine has not incarnated in anyone else in just the same individual way as it has in me. I am unique and forever individualized. Therefore, I do not need to imitate anyone or to long for the good that belongs to another. All good is now mine and is now manifest in my experience. I do not compete with anyone, for I am and remain forever myself. This self is united with all selves, but is always an individual and a unique self. 
We are each unique and beautiful. And so we celebrate this beauty in each other. We celebrate this uniqueness in each other because we are each unique individualized expressions of that divine substance as it becomes different forms and shapes and different things. Now, I had a great conversation with Jojo about this. And what he said was that in sock monkey wisdom, it goes something like this. He totally agrees with Ernest Holmes, of course, but what he says is in sock monkey wisdom, it goes like this. There is only one sock. We are all of the one sock. And sock makes us into a rainbow of colors and shapes and sizes so that sock can enjoy the full expression of itself. And I said, well, Jojo, you may be sock, but I am flesh and blood. And he rolled his eyes at me and said, it's a metaphor. <laughs> so under that metaphor, I thought I would have a conversation with Jojo about what it means to be unique within that unity. So I asked him, why does the universe value diversity? What does the universe get out of diversity anyway? And he said, well, it would be boring to be one thing. I mean, if you could be anything, in fact, if you could be everything all the time, would you just want to be one thing? Why would you want to do that? The universe, the source, needs to express itself in all these different ways. And it reminded me of an episode of Star Trek, the, uh, not Next Generation, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. I'm a little bit of a geek, so I'm going to talk Star Trek now, if that's okay with y'all. So in Star Trek Deep Space Nine, there's a character called Odo. And Odo is a shapeshifter. And his, his natural form is a gelatinous liquid. He can be anything, though, because that liquid can form itself into anything. And there was one episode where he had uh, this, uh, his people, his shapeshifting people, took away that that uh, ability of his. So he had to remain in a human form. And suddenly he had to understand that the rest of his life could be lived out as just a human. And he so missed the ability to change his shape and move and flow in different ways and become something else. Well then by a gift that came to him, he was able to once again use his shape-shifting abilities. And the moment, the very moment he realized that he could do it again, he stopped, he turned himself into a hawk and flew out over a promenade of people. Because of course that's what he wanted to do. He'd been human for all that time and hadn't been able to do this beautiful thing that he knew he could do. So how would the universe feel, do you think? being able to move into different forms and shapes and sizes and colors and expressions, of course it would want to. Of course it would want to be the full sp spectrum of colors and the full scope of experience. So yes, Jojo said, the universe would be bored if it was only one thing. So it has to express itself in multiplicity and diversity. And he also said that Diversity, multiplicity, is the way that Source learns to experience itself. That Source wants to get to know itself, and so it creates all of these different perspectives of you and me, and maybe a red-tailed hawk, and maybe a black wildebeest, and maybe a, a snake slithering on the ground. It creates all of these different experiences so that it can learn about itself, so that it can experience itself. And so every perspective, yours and mine and every other person's perspective, is important to the universe. It's kind of like when you go shopping, and you buy yourself, you're, you're trying on clothes, right? And you always go to a place where you can have that three-way mirror, right? Because you want to see from all the way around, what does this look like, this outfit that I'm wearing? How does this look? We want to have more than one perspective. We want to see from more than one view. Well, imagine 
how fantastic it would be to have an infinite number of perspectives to be able to see yourself from. That's what the universe gets to do. And Jojo also says that the universe likes to expand and grow. You know, from the, from the Big Bang, everything expanded. And it is continuing to expand and continuing to evolve. It's the tendency of the universe to grow and evolve and expand. And so that's why diversity gives birth to creativity. Now, the way Jojo explained this, he said it's like, it's like when you have a little kid who's playing make-believe, right? They're sitting down, they've got maybe a dinosaur, or a chance, what kind of things do you have? Like a transformer or something like that, and you're playing with it, but if you're playing on Stuffies. your own, What's that? Stuffies. And Stuffies, like yeah, that's great. And you're playing on your own and you have your own little scenario of what's going on, but all you have is what's in your own mind, right? But then another child comes in and asks, can I play with you? Well, suddenly, your whole game gets bigger, right? You get a wider game because you have a whole other piece of imagination that's coming in to help you grow and expand. So of course the universe needs diversity because all of that diversity creates greater and greater creativity. And that's why the universe loves this. And you know, this is something that we do as human beings too, of course, because you think about uh, large companies or organizations that have a thing called a think tank, right? Where they get in people from diverse backgrounds and experiences and expertise and gifts and talents, and they bring them into a room and they say, here's a problem, solve it. And the wider the diversity of the group that's within that room, the better the solutions they get. Because the creativity is so much bigger when you have the diverse elements coming in. So, so that's why Jojo says that the universe needs diversity. It likes diversity. It wants to be diverse. So then I asked Jojo, well, how do we embrace diversity? What do we do? We here in the Centers for Spiritual Living talk about diversity every, every Sunday, every, every class that we do, every event that we do. We talk about how we are open and inclusive, that we celebrate all paths, that we honor all paths. So what are we doing right and what could we do better? Well, Jojo said there's three different places where you celebrate diversity. Firstly, there's just diversity of people themselves. Then there's diversity of ideas. And then there's diversity of belief systems. And that we need to be diverse on all of those levels. And so I said, what, well, what does that mean, diversity of people? And he said, well, the world is like a great big toy store. And for a sock monkey, a toy store is a magical and beautiful place filled with joy, filled with curiosity about everything, and filled with excitement about everything. So when he's in a toy store, of course, you know, he looks around and he sees all the different colors and shapes and sizes of sock monkeys. And he loves every single one of them. But it's not just the sock monkeys. He sees all the other toys, whether it's a dinosaur or a transformer or a stuffy or oh, a I doll don't. or a G.I. Joe or whatever it is, right, Chance? There's a thousand different things that you find in a toy store. And he loves all of them. He's curious about all of them. He's excited about all of them. But then it's not even just about the toys. It's about all the little kids that get to come in. And he sees every single one of them, and it is a joy, and he's curious about them. And he looks at one child and says, wow, that child's excited. I'd love to be excited. I'd love to be excited with that child. And then he sees another child that comes in and is maybe sad, and he thinks, oh, look at that child. They're so sad. I'd like to give them a hug. I should give them a hug. Look at their, their beautiful sadness. I need to give them and it doesn't matter who the child is or how they come in. He wants to embrace all of them. And you know, it's not even just about the children. It's also about the parents. They're adults that come in. And sometimes the adults that come in without any children and just like toys, you know. <laughs> Some people do that sort of thing. And so he wants to embrace all of them because he's curious. 
who could that person be? What kind of amazingness and joy can that person be in, in Jojo's experience and his life? He loves all of them. And that's what a sock monkey does. They love everybody. And they're curious about everybody. When I asked him about embracing people, he said there is a deep wisdom that he read once in a book that he found in a toy store, as a matter of fact. And this deep wisdom is something that he carries with him all the time. And it's from Horton Here's a Who. It's a person's a person, no matter how small. I'm small. <laughs> yes, you are, Chance. That's a person. <laughs> and so, on sock monkey wisdom level, this is the deepest meaning possible. That all are persons, even sock monkeys who are sick, all are persons. And so all should be viewed with the same love, with the same curiosity, with the same excitement as anyone else. Okay, so now the next idea was that we need to embrace different ideas. And so in Sock Monkey Wisdom, what uh, Jojo talked about was that all ideas are simply a point of view. Now imagine how many points there are in the universe. It's infinite. So there are also infinite points of view. And what Jojo can't figure out is why we humans tend to get so stuck on our points of view and we get so, uh, so, so um, defending of and attached to our points of view all the time. And he says, you know, when you're in a forest, you'll notice that a lot of the birds in a forest have a light color on the bottom of them and a darker color on the top of them. It's a camouflage thing. So if somebody's looking from below, they see something light colored that sort of blends in with the forest canopy or the sky. And if somebody's looking from above, like a hawk or an owl, they see something sort of dark that blends in with the forest floor below. So he said, as a monkey, if he's up at the top of a tree and he sees a bird flying by underneath him, he sees a dark colored bird. But then if he was a monkey at the bottom of the tree looking up, he would see a light colored bird. Those are two points of view and they're both, the, they're, they're both bright. But one is different than the other. How awesome is that? We both get to be right, he says. And it reminded me of my son. When my son was two years old, I had him at this beautiful little daycare, and the daycare lady took him and another little boy uh, in her van off to go to a park. And as they were driving, one of them was on one side looking out the window and saw a car. The other one was on the other side looking out the window and saw a truck. And so one said, car. And the other one said, no, truck. And they had a whole argument about, no, car, no, truck, no, car. And they were both right. This appears to be a human trait since very young. They were only two years old, and they already had developed a point of view. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? And they were both right. And so that's something that we look at when we're looking at being open and inclusive of diverse ideas. We recognize that they're all just a point of view. And Wayne Dyer said, if you change the way you look at things, the way you look at things changes. Jojo said it this way, change where you're looking from, and you change what you see, because it's a point of view. So I said, well, how do you do that? Just change your point of view. And he said, well, he said, if I am talking to somebody and their point of view seems upside down and backwards, well, then I have to be upside down and backwards. So I hang from a tree, so then I can understand their point of view. And I said, okay, okay, I can, I can get that. So it's kind of like walking a mile in another man's shoes. Well, apparently that wasn't the right analogy to use because Jojo was horrified that I would steal somebody's shoes and walk away with them. <laughs> just because they didn't agree with my point of view. <laughs> and it reminded me that even in the way we speak, we sometimes speak a different way from another person. And so even the way we speak <coughs> conveys a point of view. And being diverse means that we learn to translate sometimes. So instead of saying walking a mile in someone else's shoe, 
to Jojo, I will say, sometimes you've got to hang upside down <laughs> so that you can see the upside down backward view of another person. So that's the idea of embracing different ideas. Now the third way that Jojo says we need to embrace diversity is to embrace diversity of belief systems. And he said this is the hardest one because just like our points of view, we also become very attached to our stories, to those stories that are really important to us. And he says really all religions, all they are is a story. They're the story of the unfoldment of how a people, a group, believe their lives to be, believe their lives to become better. And he said, you know, have you ever been in a bookstore? And I said, yeah. He said, have you ever been in the kids section of a bookstore? He said, yeah. He said, have you ever noticed that when you send a, a kid off into a bookstore, they will come back with 25 different books because they want them all. They love them all. They want all the stories. And I remembered when my kids were little going to the library, if there was a limit to how many books that I could bring out for each child, they would come out with the limit every single time. They wanted to read every story in that library because they have that curiosity. They have that curiosity about what all these stories could be, right? And excitement about all of them. And he said, so have you ever read any books that deeply impacted you? And I said, yeah, I've read a number of books. And he said, exactly. And I'm like, okay. And he said, have you ever read any books that taught you something about yourself or about life or that helped you experience things differently? I said, sure, I've read a number of books like that. He said, exactly. You see, there's more than one way. There's more than one book. And by embracing all of them with curiosity and excitement and asking questions and feeling, feeling like you just want to know more, you can embrace other people's belief systems. Because you know that if I can have a story in my life, whatever it is that changes my life, that makes me live a greater and deeper purpose and an expanded worldview, then so can someone else. And maybe their story has different characters in it. Or maybe their story is from a different time frame. Or, or whatever it is. But it's, it's a beautiful story that has impacted them. So instead of saying, what? You like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? No, you're wrong. There's only Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. You say, no, that's a great story. Tell me what you like about it. Tell me how it impacts you. Tell me what it means to you. And then you say, you know, my favorite is Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Can I tell you a little bit about that, why I like it? And so you come together instead of being drawn apart and you honor each other in your diverse viewpoints. So this is Jojo's idea. This is Jojo's idea of what diversity is. And you'll notice that all the way through, it's really just about curiosity. It's about being curious and open and excited for all of the experience and all of the people around you and all of the viewpoints around you and all of the stories. And so, for Jojo, as a sock monkey, curiosity is the key to diversity. And isn't that a beautiful thing? Mm -hmm. So I just invite you all to embrace all of the experience around you. And look at, look at all of it with that Jojo-like curiosity. And now if you want to join me in doing an affirmation about this, please grab your little affirmation sheets that are on your chairs. And we can say it together. <laughs> I, I celebrate, celebrate all the beautiful expressions of life I see in every person I meet. And please feel free to bring that home with you and post it on your fridge for the week if you like. And uh, enjoy your week celebrating this diversity.